Well, hello everyone. I'm Ted Gardner and I'm a, an interviewer for the Library of Congress Oral History Project, capably handled here by our wonderful library at 8th and Vine in our history department and Dennis Daly is our historian and our videographer and really uh, put, pulls things together in this program for us. Um, we have an unusual situation today. This morning we interviewed uh, Joe Russo and this afternoon now we're getting Sam Russo. Brothers and uh, Sam, uh, where were you born? Cincinnati, Ohio. On the west side? Right, over to Ryan. Oh, that's it's right. 1341 Clay Street. How about that? Now, we, we, uh, we learned some very interesting things about your family. Uh, for your family and for your close beloved ones that will see this DVD, tell us, uh, tell us about your family. Well, as you well know, there was eight of us. Uh, seven of us survived. Mm -hmm. And uh, we all lived down at 13th and Clay. How about that? And uh, all of us went to St. Mary's and uh, to the eighth grade, and all the rest of our brothers went to Purcell High School. Mm -hmm. I went to Purcell High School. And unfortunately, I, uh, I left in my junior year due to the fact that my father was sick. He was gone. So all my brothers was younger, so I decided to leave and the senior guy. support the family a little bit and help them, which sure. I did. Sure. I went to work with my father up in Tony Palazzola's. <laughs> he stayed there for a while, and uh, and then I left Palazzola's and I went to work for Ruthman's Machine Shop, and that's when everything. Is that went. Tom Tom Ruthman? Tom Ruthman. Sure, I know Tom. Yeah, Tommy. What me and we sang around with him. Nice guy. Tommy. Yes. Yeah, he's a member of our, uh, our Rotary Club of Cincinnati, where I belong, and uh, I see him frequently. Yeah, Tom. Yeah, Tom, nice there we went out. We had a lot of fun together. Tommy was one of the type of them guys that, uh, he have a few drinks, he get a little mean. Oh. <laughs> you know, Tom. <laughs> I and didn't we, know that. Oh, yeah. Well, that was back in them days, you know, the younger back days. Back in the day, yeah. okay. <laughs> well, like I say, Jack was already gone, and uh, things was going pretty good for me. I... He left me his car and I had my car and I was dating and uh, one day I come home from work and uh, I knew my mom was in, pop was in pretty bad shape and I asked him what was wrong and they says, you got a letter in there and I figured right now what it was. Uncle Sam. So I opened it up and it was there, you know, greetings. greetings. Wow. So I says, all right, then uh, I, uh, matter of fact, it was right down across the street there. Draft Board 52, where I went to have my physical. Mm -hmm. And when I went over there, it looked like homecoming. Because <laughs> that was that day, you know, just I went to school with these guys. We worked, you know, a lot of them that we hung around with all was over there taking our physical. Yeah. So we passed, a, we passed I passed the physical and uh, we went down to the, um, Alms Hotel across the street from the old times building there. And we had a sandwich and the friend I was with was Frank. He says, well, I really don't want to go to the, the, the army. I says, well, what, well, let's go back and talk to the recruiter. That's where the Navy recruiter was. So we went back and talked to him and that's when they had the buddy system. You remember the buddy system? Yes, yes. So he says, uh, if, if you would like, or you already passed your physical, I will let you and Frank Join the Navy and I'll keep you together, which sounded pretty good to me. Mm -hmm. So he did, and uh, he looked at our papers and we passed. And he this signed, was Frank who Frank Monterosa. Oh, so we we grew up together just like Jack. And uh, he uh, he says I'll put you together. He says give me a week or two. So I went home. And I told my mom that we wasn't going to the Army. That I'd like to go to the Navy and be with Jack, and that Frank and I was going to leave together. So he had, a, he had a, some relatives that lived down in Kentucky, so we went down there for a couple of days and enjoyed ourselves. And I got a call, my papers were there, so we come home, Frank called me and he says, did you get your papers? I says, yes. So, um, the old Union Terminal building, <laughs> your mom and the kids all walked me down there, and, and at the time the place was really, really, you know, busy, oh, trains boy. coming in and out, all the servicemen, 
You thought the Second World War was bad. You should have seen the people doing the Korean War. Yeah. So they put us on the train and shipped, shipped us up to Great Lakes, <laughs> Camp Perry, and we stayed there for four or five weeks and come home on leave. And uh, they, had they, they hadn't assigned me to anything yet because I was still waiting to get word from the, war de or from the, uh, Navy, department. the Navy Department of, if, I was to, if they got the letter from my mom and dad. Well, luckily they did. Mm -hmm. And it was very unusual, as you well know, being a veteran, that uh, brothers didn't serve in a combat zone since the Sullivan brothers. Oh, yeah. Sure. So uh, they approved it, and my mom wasn't too happy about it. And I said, okay. So they flew us from uh, Great Lakes. I flew down to Long Beach, California. Hmm. And uh, we stayed there for two weeks, undergoing shots every day, getting ready to go overseas. So we stayed there and then finally they put me on a transport ship, the USS Breckenridge, with about 5,000 soldiers. And so it was a mixed group. Mm -hmm. And uh, took us over there and uh, you know, you talk about getting seasick as just a kid. Oh boy. Oh boy. And uh, there, I knew something was wrong because, uh, as you well know, being in the service, it came over the loudspeakers that all boats was made report to the locker room. So, as we went down to below decks there, they had all these five gallon buckets. They started putting them all around. Well, of course, you know what that was. We ran into a storm. And you talk about sick. Oh my I was sick. Oh God. Not just me. Yeah. Everybody aboard the ship was oh sick. Oh God. So then we landed in Yokosuka, Japan, and the USS Iowa had just left mm -hmm. on a bombing mission. So I stayed there for two days, and then there was a destroyer going out, you know, on the bomb line. So they decided to put me on this destroyer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Now, if anybody knows anything about the Navy, that is the destroyer. Tin cans. Oh. Oh, brother. So I got all my gear packed up, went on the destroyer. We was out there. I was sick every day because oh. the destroyer goes up and down oh, this yeah. way and that way. Terrible. So finally, we got to the point where we met with the fleet, and uh, I could see the Iowa. And I, I think this is, a, is the highlight of my, you know, of being in the Navy. There's not too many people that it was highlighted from one ship to the other. Yeah, oh, right. And now, I did that. Okay, now, let's hold it right there, and we'll remember where we are. You're gonna have a great, <laughs> frightening experience. But I wanna go back a little bit now, because when you got to, um, when you got to Boots at Great Lakes, mm -hmm. uh, tell us about your experience there. Well, naturally, when we got to Great Lakes, it's, uh, <coughs> Again, as you, uh, the next service man, as I, my brother, would tell you, everything is so clean, you would not believe it. Yeah. The floors have to be kept clean, mm. and the bunks have to be kept clean, and you meet, you meet every kind of person there was. Remember the, making, your, making your bed? Bed had to be made a certain corner. way, square corners. Oh, brother. And uh, so the first time we arrived at the barracks, it, it, was, it was already vacant and it was uh, ready to be cleaned up. Mm -hmm. So they come up with all these buckets and everything. Now this wasn't Holy Stone, this was buckets and brooms and mops. <laughs> and we started mopping the floor. And uh, Frank, the, the guy was with me, was a big guy. He was, uh, so we're mopping the floor and all of it along and said, this, this one guy, he wasn't doing anything. Just sitting on his bunk, you know, like that. And, uh, Told Frank, I said, this isn't right. Not just me, the other guy said the same thing. Yeah. So we went up to him and uh, I says, you know, you're no, you, you're no better than I am. And I says, we're here out of here cleaning up all those barracks and you're sitting on your know what. And he said, well, I don't feel like doing any work. Well, oh. that, then it said too good with me. <laughs> so we wrestled around for a while and then it broke it up and then uh, he got up and did a little bit of work. But the funny thing about that is from that day on, to the day I left boot camp, I never had a trouble again. Mm -hmm. And my friend Frank, as big as he was, they made him master of arms of the barracks. So we was in pretty good shape. Well, I'd say you had a friend in the right I place. I had a friend in the right place. <laughs> now, uh, 
up at Great Lakes, that's when we learned to, to do everything, but uh, we had to stay in night watches up at the barracks, fire watches they called them at the time, 12 to 4. But once you finish your shift at 12 to 4, you didn't sleep in. Because mm -mm. when Reverly went the next day, he went the next day. Then we go down, just like you say, 6 o'clock was Reverly. Then we get up, and if you've ever been up to Chicago, you know the weather up there. Yeah, could be terrible. No, it was no marching in the gym or anything. We marched on the grinder mm -hmm. in the snow and everything. Mm -hmm. So it was an experience. It certainly it was. It was an experience and a half. Did you get any liberty in Chicago? Yes, we did. At that time, we got the liberty, and uh, I'll go back and tell you, because I was only 18. Mm -hmm. Just turned 18 and a half. You so know. you were not supposed to drink. So Miller was up there, they always invited us up there. Not just me, everybody went up there, was on leave. Sure. And uh, of course they didn't, you know, you come in there, they give you, you go to the, the, the room, big room, and you could sample their beer. Sure. So we had a couple beers out there, and then, uh, uh, not that I didn't drink beer before, but, uh, and then we went down into the heart of Chicago, which is uh, the first time I've been up there. The loop. Was, oh, the loop and everything, it was, it was just, it was an experience and a half for a Incredible. kid just come from Cincinnati. I know it. Those that loop was loaded with bars and and everything and uh, joints and and uh, and there again, Chicago was a great fleet town. Right. They had Glenview Naval Air Station not right up the way there, and of course Great Lakes. And, well, now, so there you were, 18 years old in the big city. Mm -hmm. And what the heck did you do? We just went around. We went to uh, first of all. I knew we was at the point where um, Al Capone was up there. Mm. We went to see his places where he was supposed to live at the time and everything. Okay. That was an experience. And we got to, uh, we broke off, him and Frank and I and a couple of the other guys went to the place where they, St. Valentine's Day, where they shot them all. We oh, seen the garage. The massacre. The massacre. Oh my gosh. And then by that time, it was time to get back to the ship. Yeah. So they loaded us on the, tr no, on the, uh, well, we don't have it here in Cincinnati. The, the, the loop, the oh, train, yeah. you to take the train. Yeah. Then we went back to the, uh, the Great Lakes. We went back to the barracks and uh, started all over. Same yeah. routine yeah. every day. Well, you know, uh, Chicago was a great town to be in and, uh, during wartime. And uh, as you say, it was easy to get around because right. of this it was very, mass very transportation easy. that mm -hmm. they had. Yeah. Uh, did you make any friends in Chicago? Yes, we year? did. Mm -hmm. We made quite a few friends up in there. Good. Before I left, and we, uh, um, matter of fact, I met a couple of them uh, when we split up as we got our orders to leave. Uh, when I got, was over in, it was, it was one of the funny things. We was in Yakuska, and I had Liberty, and we went to the um, service bands club. And Lord and behold, there was two guys that was in my, Division up at Great Lakes. They were as assigned to a an, a, 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 an oiler, and they was worked with the Seventh Fleet. Now we got together and had a good time. We really had a good oh, time yeah. together. And then we went back, you know. And then, uh, well, now you're going across on the on that troop ship with all those seasick military oh, people. Oh, that must have been a that was something else. Like oh, I said, I wasn't the only one. No, of course. Because a lot of us over over the rails going like this, oh, you know. Yeah. But I was, uh, oh. for some unknown reason, my stomach just couldn't take it. Yeah, I so, understand. I understand. And and that compartment. Now you're talking about a troop ship. On the Iowa, there was four four bunks. Mm -hmm. On this troop ship, there was six. <laughs> now you can imagine this: all these guys in there, six in a bunk. Oh, oh, what a mess! Oh, it was. It was. It, you know, it was an experience and a half. You waited in line to take a shower. You waited in line to go to the bathroom. You waited in line to eat. But that was an experience you went through in the yes, service. Yes, yes. Just well, uh, you're you're exactly right. And as you point out, those things stick with you. And you know you learn from things like you did. That. You surely did. Well, I can tell that you you were open to uh, to learning, and uh, you took to it very very well. Yep. Um, and that was the way you had to be. Right. Otherwise, you were going to be desperate if you're not weren't willing to go along with the rest. Yeah, yeah. But um, again, uh, did you go straight across to Japan? We went right across to Japan. Whew, 
My, that's a long voyage. On a troop ship. Wow. Now the Breckenridge, she she held what? Oh, I don't know how many she held, but she was a, she was a, a, a trans. She's transport. Several she was thousand. A, several thousand people. Oh my gosh. She going to Japan at the same time. And they were mostly uh, army. Army and Marines. Not many Air Force people. I didn't see it. and Navy personnel. Yeah, sure. So we went all around to there. <laughs> So it was, it was a great experience. Now, you didn't have to stand and watch it on that. Show, I did. did you? Oh, you did? Just stand to fire watch. Oh, the fire Everybody watch. took turns standing watches. Sure. And the fire watch in there was not, just the same thing as you learned at Great Lakes. Yeah. You stood up at night in the compartment and Kept you walked awake. around. Yep. And uh, if anybody went around a compartment with hundreds of guys sleeping in it, <laughs> You were in the Navy. You know you, the things that you heard, you know, the snoring and oh. the talking and the oh. things that went on. I know. And it was, it was an experience and a half. It sure was. So, and it was my job just to make sure we were walking around the barracks. At the, now, at that time, you could smoke in the, in, in, in the barracks or in, in, the, in the compartments. Yes. You can't do that no more. Right. So you had to watch these guys smoking and didn't put the cigarettes out in their bed or anything. So that was one of the fire watches we had. So <laughs> now, uh, going through boots, did you have any particular type of training? Did they see something in you that they wanted you to, whether it was a bosun's mate or, or, or a water tender or, or what? Well, again, you know, getting into the the thing you're talking about, I you don't hear people talk. I don't know if you went through this, but you'd be surprised the number of people. There was 205 of us in my division that didn't know their left foot from their right foot. Mm -hmm. So first of all, when we got to the grinder, that's the first thing they did. They took the guys that couldn't march right, and they made a, you know, made a division. Sure. Just to, to, after ours, they took yeah. them out to march. And then you'd be surprised the guys that joined the Navy couldn't swim. Mm -hmm. And then Frank and I was good swimmers, so uh, they made us, you know, like the overseer when we was in the swimming pool. Sure. So you had to learn to swim. If you couldn't swim, you didn't graduate. The only problem that I had, and uh, again, you was, I don't know how you went through boot camp, but we had to jump off that tar. Yep. You remember the tar? Oh, yeah. It was 50, yeah. 50 something feet high. Oh God, it was, that was a. Ooh. It was just frightening. Frightening as heck. And uh, I told Frank he was he was in back of me. I said, if I freeze, the two of the time you need to jump off. I said, just give me a little shove. <laughs> well, I just went up there and I did it. Yeah. You know how you did, and then before I hit it, I took my pants just like they told me. Yep. You remember how you make a? Oh sure, make a make a make kind a, of a yeah parachute. Make, it's a parachute. <laughs> and uh, we got by there, so. <laughs> You know, that now, did you have to swim what 50 yards? 50 or? yards, yeah. backwards too. Yep. And you had to float for 10 minutes. Yes. If you tread didn't do, water. Tread water. If you didn't float for 10 minutes, you didn't pass the exam. That's right. That's and a lot right. of guys couldn't do that, so we had extra curriculum and we took them down at night. Sure. Sure. Days. Well, that was that was very important because you know if you were in the ocean, uh, you you had to be able to take care of yourself. Right. In right. The water. Well. Sam, the, the, um, uh, the re close relationship of, of bodies and everything as it was on the, on the troop ship. Uh, then when you got to Yokosuka, uh, you went ashore. Mm -hmm. And then were you assigned to that destroyer or? No, I was that, actually. That was just to get you out to the island. I was actually assigned already. My duty was already assigned to USS Iowa. On the island. I just missed her. She just pulled out. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah. And they weren't, of course, for one guy, they weren't going to come back. No, no. But there was a destroyer in there loading up food and ammunition, and they put me on that one. Well, but she you? was part of the Seventh Fleet, so she was going to go out again to meet the Iowa. Mm -hmm. So as we sure. joined together there, that's. I was even a surprise to me, you know, yeah. I never experienced anything like well, that no. before. Now, they're going to transfer you from the destroyer to the battleship to the big baby. Uh, tell us about that. Well, that was what, as you well know, you, <laughs> you, they shoot lines over together like this. Yeah. And then the, the guys over there are sitting on this side and the guys, they just hold them. They don't secure them, they just hold them. And then he had the bosun's base chair. Now, I don't know if we was 25 or 30 feet apart, 
But to me, it looked like 50 miles. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I got in the postman there, and the band, they always do this. The band's playing, you know, the flying trapeze. <laughs> Trying to <laughs> Here we go across there. So, so finally I got to the ship and got out of the chair. Was the water rough? Yes, it was a little bit rough. <laughs> Thank God it wasn't raining or anything. And then, the, I, you know, they, they told me, uh, they put me on the side, and looked at my orders, and they assigned me to the first division which I wasn't too thrilled about the first division. Deck division. I wanted to go yeah. with him, but right. you don't do that in the service. Well, now, how did you know about your brother? I mean, you'd been corresponding. You knew that he was aboard the Iowa. Right, we knew he was aboard the Iowa. So you looked for him when you came aboard, right? Right, I looked, well, he already, yeah, I looked for him when I went or aboard. he was looking for you. He was looking for, he didn't know I was coming aboard. Oh. He had no idea that that oh. was me sitting in that chair. So after everything, and they transferred a few other guys over from the, in, in the Bozeman's chair, and finally I got assigned to the first division, and he knew it was me, and then we, we got together and met. So <laughs> what a great time. It was a great time oh, after that, I'd seen him like there. The reunion. That first thing I says, I'm not thrilled getting in that first division. I says, how can I get in the storekeeper's division? He said, it's not that easy. <laughs> so I went through the whole deal with the first division, and that's the holy stoning of the decks and the, it's real grubby the sweeping down duty. the polishing and everything that was the grunts that we did that every day yeah and and things like that paint oh paint the God. lines and i'll just tell you a quick story um the division i was on was in, in charge of the forecastle. okay the captain the admiral come down off of that now we're pulling into i forgot what port we were pulling into and uh, he gives me a bucket of white paint and a brush. Now I got a whites on too, you know. And he says, go over there, put this piece of canvas down and paint these lifelines. Mm -hmm. Well, stupid me, you know, that's what the band says. So I went over there and start painting there. And the first thing you know, big wind come by and blow that white paint all over the deck. Oh. Now that didn't sit too good with him. No. And so I had a little punishment that night. So <laughs> Well now you say him. Was that a bosun's mate? My first class bosun's mate. Oh my god. And I'll bet he was a salty character. He was. He was he was a reservist and I think he had already had twenty years in. Oh my god. But he wasn't very nice. No. Tough, tough, tough. And I didn't know what to tell him, you know. Of course not. I thought so well somebody should have told me to put a brick down or something to hold a can. Yeah. But everything was going so fast that the, the ambulance gig and the <laughs> captain's boat was coming in, the gig was coming in to pick him up, and oh. I was all excited. This this is the first time I was ever seen all this stuff. But we got over it, so everything was pretty good. Now, the, the Iowa had, as you say, had an admiral aboard. Right. It was a flag aboard. Flagship. Okay, okay. Now, in, in the first division, you met fellows that you'd never seen before. Right. All new guys. All new, new guys. guys. From all over the country. All over from everywhere. I'll be darned. And I think most of these guys, they weren't bitter, but they was, uh, they was mostly reservists, as you well know, got called up during the Korean War. Back. They, they really didn't want to be there. And they were, most, some was elderly, not elderly, you know, some was uh, oh, not boots. Up in their 30s. They was already had seen some service sure. and they weren't too pleased with it. No. Oh. And they were called back because of the reservist time. and. Uh, no. But most of them, you know, just like I was telling him, you go to the service, you make it what you want to make it. If you, if you go through it with a good feeling, you'll make it all right. right. If you go in with a chip on your shoulder, there's always somebody there to knock it off. You're so right. So, but uh, we all got along pretty good. Well, that, that's so important, Sam, and I can see in your personality how you could get along with people very well. Hold your own, but you were a nice guy to and be able to get along with people. And uh, uh, so there you were. Were you still an apprentice seaman? Seaman apprentice, first class? Just, got, just got a ball, just got aboard, but been aboard two days. Yeah, yeah. So. And then uh, how long did it take you to make first class seaman? Um, not too long after that, you know, you yeah. get your third stripe there and we went yeah. there, so. Right, right. And uh, I still was in the first division. I still wanted to get out of the first division. Oh, sure. Because I knew where my, I knew what I wanted to do, you know, from my previous working experience, and uh, I wanted to get in that. I wanted to get either supplies or ship service. Mm -hmm. 
So as time went on, a couple weeks later, the first class and I got along pretty good. And um, finally I went and asked, I said, you know, what should I do? And he said, just ask for a transfer slip. Mm -hmm. So I went to the first class, I know you don't do it, you just don't do that. I had to go to the chief petty officer and ask him, he says, well, I don't mind. He says, but uh, you go see the uh, first class, he's in charge of it. So I went and seen him and it's just one of them things in the service that goes, you know, we, we talk for a while and he says, I don't mind giving you this transfer. He says, but uh, sometime one or another, I may need a favor. Mm -hmm. And he says, how do you feel about that? Now, being in the service, you know, you couldn't get anything in, you know, on that chip unless you had a chip. Sure. You had to and, have a and then we took care of all the chips, the little books, the pencils and the paint and everything. <laughs> I said, I think we could work something out. So I got my transfer. You scratch my back. I'll you scratch my you. back. <laughs> but before I left the ship, before I did that, uh, um, my first battle station was probably one of the dangerous there was. What was that? I was a I was a loader on a 16-inch gun. Oh my! In the turret that blowed up and killed 200 people. Oh yes. Now yes. people don't understand that. You got to understand this. Be like you know, it was, uh, the first time we went to for general quarters. 18 years old, 18 and a half. Greenhorn. Don't think nothing of it. I got on the ladder, I went down. You know, first thing we got down there to close the hatch, we went to condition zero where the ship was sealed tight. First thing you did, you take off all, all metal and you give them to the gunner's mate in charge. Mm -hmm. He took it there. I said, well, you know, why take, at the time I was thinking, why are we taking my dog tags off and everything? I found out shortly. Because one spark, as you well know, yep. so piece of metal. Piece of metal. These containers that we played with or took on the ship are stacked up like this, and it's 200 pounds of black powder in one of these containers. Wow. And once you once you seal it, break the seal on it. The first thing you do is you see this cross the bone of you know danger. Mm -hmm. So. My job, my first job was that I pull the first sack out, then I pass it to you, then the third guy would put it on the elevator until we got, you know, to mm -hmm. So we were doing pretty good there. So all of a sudden I reached up and got one and the sack broke. And these black powders in little containers about that big, you've probably seen them, mm -hmm. 50 pounds. And it fell on the floor there. And man, that was, you know, to me again, you just don't pick them up. No. You don't move, you don't do nothing. Oh my God. And the first class gunner mates come, not with a broom and a mop or anything. Piece by piece, he picked them up. Oh and we put them in a big cellophane bag and closed it up. You had to handle them very carefully. And very, very carefully. Oh my God. You know, it didn't at the time, like you say, it didn't dawn on me to think about that. No. Because no, it was didn't just, expect that. didn't expect that. <laughs> so, um, now how many men were be in, in, the, in the turret? There was 10 of us in the turret. Ten, ten in the, ten in the tours, and either first class gunner's mate or I don't think there was less than a second class gunner's mm -hmm. mate there because he took care of everything. Wow! And um, you know, first time we went to general quarters, it wasn't bad. Now, mind you, I was three stories below deck. Right. And we, I didn't know what was going on topside. Nobody down there had gone along topside. All I knew that he was in a he was in a, in a mount with a five inch mount. Now we want people to know that the term. General quarters in the Navy means battle stations. battle stations, right? So as I come up the ladder there, I just got to thinking to myself. I got to the second run, and I started shaking. And I said, "Well, this ain't right," you know. I says, "By the time I got topside, I was shaking all over, knowing that what would have happened down there, oh, yeah, three can... stories down, oh my gosh, and uh, what would have happened, you know, yeah. the, the whole ship would have blowed up in the powder room." Yeah. Now you were not aboard. When they had the no, the terrible, no, that, terrible, that was a terrible thing. That that was, and I don't think they'll ever find out what similar. happened there. It's just I think you're right. that was the turret I was in, turret number two. Oh it blew my up. Gosh. Oh my gosh! Killed now million. turret number two would have been the one on, above. The, yeah. Number one is the number one, one, and then the number two, two, and then and number, number three, three is two, was in the back. Aft, right. Yeah. Yeah, that was, uh, I remember when that happened, and of course it was a terrible, terrible, and they've had so much investigation right. and everything. 
Well, you certainly were lucky, and, and but there again, your wonderful training came through, didn't it? It did. It sure did. It did. It did. Okay. The, the gunner's mate, he didn't, he was just as calm as could be. Yeah. You know, he picked him up, and then uh, he thought nothing of him. Put him in a big seal bag, and we went on firing until we got down, until general quarters was over. Mm -hmm. We went topside, and that's when I figured out, man. And... Uh, that was our first experience there. You know, they tell you, uh, we go talk, talk to these kids at school. That's the first thing they ask you, I tell them. They'll say, well, did you kill anybody? Or I said, well, I think we did. Was you ever scared? I says, yes, I was scared. Mm -hmm. And I says, I couldn't wait to get away from it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, to talk to these kids, they're funny, but those are things they ask us, you know. And oh, sure. Those are three questions. I joined the Navy, <laughs> I was scared, and you know, things like that, so. Yeah. Right. But then after I got to the storekeepers, um, when I got to be the storekeeper there, they uh, put me in charge of all the small arms. Oh. See, we had two landing, uh, two landing platoons of Marines. And I was in charge of that. They put me, a little, put me in a little corner, not a little corner, you know. Mm -hmm. Enough desk and everything where it kept everything. I uh, took charge of all the ammunition, all the bayonets, rifles, sidearms, anything that could be Taking a taking a board on a you know when you went to, uh, on land, mm -hmm. I was in charge of that. Boy, so that, that, that was, was it's just, it was course. a very important job. Oh, I should say. So. Uh, now that that's interesting. So going back just a step, uh, you got the chit to, for transfer to the storekeeper, storekeeper. division, and uh, you kissed the division number one good. Yeah, oh man, <laughs> that was uh, I'm so glad of that. Only people in that division, the deck guys, knows that it's, it's uh, it was tough. Oh yeah, it was that was especially tough. holy stone the deck. Oh yeah. And if you know what that is, is you take that stone, you put the sand, a bucket of sand down there, and you hold it in between like this. By the time you were done, your arms would swell up like that. Yeah. You know, and you did the whole deck. Whew. So. But uh, yeah, then I was in, a, in charge of that, and uh, he come and asked for a few favors, and I give him a few pencils and a book. You know, he was very sure. satisfied. That's, so, that's nice. That's nice. But after I got that there, then they changed my battle station <clears throat> to a forty-inch mount. Oh, so, so I was you a, were in the I was in the first aircraft. I was in the first loader on on turret number three. Oh my golly! The first loader. So that was my second battle station. Mm -hmm. Now. Um, that first time, though, when you were in turret number two, <clears throat> were they firing at the enemy, or was this just practice? No, we were firing at the enemy. You were firing shoreward. first, first, first combat we got into. I'll be we done. were firing at the enemy. We was blowing up some supply dumps okay. and a bridge. So you, I think. you did get a report on. Oh yeah, on we get a report on what they did. We had a lucky lady, the helicopter. Oh. She was an observer over there, and she would re radio, back, radio what, back and say what. Um, and then as the day went on, and we got back to the barracks or about the, the, the department, they told us what we did. You yeah. can see some of the damage we did in the book. Sure. So it, it's a funny thing there. You go through all the stuff there. And uh, when we was over in Korea, I think my brother, he didn't hit on this, but uh, being a, an ex Navy man and being an aircraft man, it, uh, we operated with the Essex and the USS Boxer. You remember the Boxer? Sure, the Boxer, you bet. So she got hit. You know, they hit the Boxer. She was offshore? Off, she was uh, offshore. She was just uh, coming Korea back. Or off? Yeah, no, she was in Korea off the 38th yeah. parallel. So here we go to the, you know, not just us, every ship they had and the fleet went over there and she was burning. Really? She was really burning. Boy. So uh, we stood by, we couldn't do much. And then uh, they evacuated all the injured from the boxer that we could handle to the Iowa because we had an emergency. We had operating rooms on there like in a hospital. Sure. So we took all the wounded that we could from the boxer and then they got the fire under control but then she went limping back to Yakuska. Hmm. So that was one experience we had there with that one there. Well, I'll bet you had a sick bay full of people. We did, wow. we did. Goodness sakes. Yes. Now, being in, in, in storekeeping, uh, but as you said, you were in charge of small arms and so forth. So you didn't really have anything to do with 
hospital supplies or anything? No, like no, that? that was another division that took care of all the hospital supplies and everything. I see. That was medical, so the medical division took care of all the supplies. Right, so. I see. But I went, to the, well, I went down to the medical division a few times, you know, cold or something, yeah. take an aspirin. Sure. That's all they give you is take an aspirin, sure. you know. So, <laughs> but there's another story there when I was in the first division. Good, tell us about that. Uh, you know, I was born in Cincinnati. All, I lived here in Cincinnati and I could stand these winters here. Now, I don't know if Jack, he hit on it. You talk about cold. Mm. The first watch I had, I had a 12 to four watch up on the forecastle, a mine watch. Mm. Me and the Marine, I had the port side, he had the starboard side. Oh. Now, you know how this is, in the, you know, probably there, and get ready to go. Of course, everything's blacked out. You got the goggles on, and I thought I had enough gear on to foul weather gear. I'm telling you, I thought I was going to freeze to death. Yeah. I never, never, I couldn't wait to get back underneath there. Four hours up there on the forecastle at that with the binoculars looking out for mines. Now, this was in the dead of winter? Wasn't this was in the dead of winter. Oh, my God. And it was, I mean, it was cold. Terrible. Oh. You know, and all that steel around you and everything, you know. <laughs> Terrible. And you know, people say, "Well, what happened?" At? Well, after you do, after you do your shift, you know, you go back to the barracks and you go to sleep. Then when Reverly blows, you're up. Back you're right it. back at it again. Sure. You get four hours sleep. You're right back at it again. Yeah. So. Yeah. That's it, it was an experience. Oh, it was I something else so. for, her, for well, a kid. Now, um, how, how did your how did your advancement in ratings go? In the, I made third class. You made third, third class, class like your brother. At the time, they, they took the freeze off, then I made third class, and then I stayed at third class until I got transferred from the ship. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So How long the, were you aboard the island? I was aboard uh, 52 to 54. Oh my God. Yeah, he, he left. So this is another story that uh, being an old Navy Good. man, I guess it's, uh, we knew we were taking another trip. We was going. We had already come from a, a mid, a, a mid cruise, you know. A, uh, so we were going to take another midshipman cruise, and we was going to go over to the Mediterranean, mm -hmm. you know, France and all that. So sure. there was seven of us storekeepers, and they come out. They needed seven storekeepers, or as many as they could, and for shore duty. Well, the uh, chief come down and he posted it on the bulletin board. And nobody no wanted to go. Up. Now this was a shrewd old guy. So he come down, he talked to all of us, and he says, I'm not getting involved in this. He says, you guys work it out among yourself. Oh. So we couldn't work it out. Nobody wanted to leave. No, you so wanted he, that med cruise. I wanted to go on that med cruise <laughs> while we was loading up, ready to go. So he did it the right way. And draw the straws. Oh, my gosh. Oh, that's so, so, so I drawed the wrong one. <laughs> so I left the ship and went down to Green Coast Springs, Florida, and I stayed down there for two years. Oh, for heaven's so, sake. And you never got a med cruise? Never got the med cruise. Oh, my I God. Guess it was, what a... But that cruise we took, in, uh, the first med cruise, we, we were the first battleship to pull into the, um, to England since the end of World War II. Oh. We just missed the Carnation by two days. And you think we didn't have a time over there? Two oh, weeks liberty, brother. pulled out of there and went to Scotland, oh. went to Portugal, went to Oslo, Norway. What a great time. Oh man, Scotland, we went to Scotland. Yeah. It was great. I'll bet you loved that. I did. And here you were, young sailor boy from yeah. Cincinnati, Cincinnati Ohio. just turned 19 now. Join the Navy and see the world. I did, we did, <laughs> we did. See the world. The old recruiting slogan. It was really, it, it was, it was an experience and a half. Oh, I really gosh. enjoyed it. So. Well, tell us about going to Scotland and Portugal. What, that what, was really, now Portugal, I've never seen a bullfight before and it was a religious holiday over there. Mm -hmm. And they didn't have the bullfights. So as a special favor to us, you know, to the fleet, they had a special bullfight for us, oh, they put on which was very, very nice. They said nice. They didn't kill the bulls. That over there, they don't kill the bulls until they take them in the back, and then they kill them and give them to the uh, the 
like our free banks or something. Yeah, poor people, man. But anyhow, it was very, very nice. But again, you get these guys, and of course we had a little few drinks, and we had a few of them would get drunk. We had a couple of them got out there to try to fight the bulls. <laughs> they didn't make it. So oh, brother. it was one of them things, you know. Oh, yeah. So. How about Scotland? Beautiful, what was beautiful your Scotland. Of Scotland. I tell you, it was wonderful. Yeah. Just to see, the, just to see the beaches over there. Right. They treated us like kings. Oh yeah, yeah. The Scots were wonderful. Very, very nice. The food was good. Yeah. The people were nice. I don't think we pulled into a port that people didn't appreciate us. Now, this huge ship, the Iowa. My golly, pulling into a port. It was a very, very impressive thing. It was for the for the citizens, you know, to see this thing come in. Now, did you get to go ashore and stay overnight, or no? You had to come back. Port and start Liberty. <coughs> port and we start. had Port and start Liberty, but there's a lot of times we pulled in, like in uh, Scotland, we couldn't pull in the port because there was not a, a berth there that could hold us. Okay. So we would dock way out in the. In, in the in, in you know dock out and then sure. we take the liberty boat into town sure. another story i like to tell you and oh, i think good. jack forgot to do it more stories the better we are coming back from korea and we pulled into pearl harbor now pearl harbor didn't have a at the time didn't have a pier to hold us it was a beautiful day we had port and start liberty and we stayed there for a couple days port and start liberty and then one day it was uh, come over to loudspeaker, prepare to make, prepare to get underway. Well, half of us was on shore and the other half was on the ship. <laughs> you know, I says, uh, I don't know if Jack was, yeah, was you on shore? I says, what, 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 what's going on? I said, the ship's getting ready to leave. He said, I don't know. So we packed up, anchored out, went out, a typhoon was coming in. Oh. So we went out in the middle of the ocean and rode out that, that typhoon. Mm -hmm. Half of a crew was gone, half of the other one was on there. So we made it. But the lucky guys ashore. No, but the guys on. ashore, they, they, they had a good time. I'm pretty sure they had a good time. They really had a good time. I'm oh, pretty no, sure. that's an unusual story. It's that is. That was something unusual. I couldn't figure out. I kept saying to Jack, why are we going out there? Why don't we just stay where we're at? Well, it wasn't like that. That ship would have been tore apart. So Really? Yes. Yeah. Well then, so you you both experienced typhoon, right? Oh my golly, God! It was a, it was an experience. Now, uh, in in a storm like that, what what was your duty station? I was by my duty station. I went right back to my little cubby hole. Okay. Did a little bit of work down there, you know, keep, keep keeping the track of the books and everything. Stayed I was in a pretty secure place. Mm -hmm. I figured that you know, nice down and, through nice there, so I was all right. Yeah. So. Right. I had it pretty well. It wasn't a big place, but it was enough to get, you know, get your job done and everything sure. that you had to do. But you, again, as big as that ship was, 45,000 tons, uh, you could still... We still maneuvered. Maneuvered, but you felt that motion in that you, terrible we did. storm. We did. <sighs> Boy. There was a couple of times it was, like Jack said, touch and go. Now, the battleship and, and being a an airman as I was, uh, you had observation planes on that. We did. How many? Two, the lucky lady, and who was the other one, Jack? We had two helicopters. Oh, you had two, two helicopters. Two helicopters, they was the, op back at that time. Oh, so it now, was. Oh, the, we had two heli a helicopter and a uh, seaplane uh, that we launched from the back of the ship, yeah, from the, fuck, from the rear of the ship. Yeah. yeah. So you did have a, a mm -hmm. seaplane, yeah. Well. And of course, this, that's interesting because this is the time when helicopters became very popular, very, very, popular, right. very important. Because during World War II, we didn't have them. No, not no, very many no, of them. No. But we had that seaplane that we launched. Yeah. She was, uh, well, that was an interesting operation, wasn't right. it? Right. When that, when, when, firing she, that baby off? Yeah, catapult. firing that thing off, off the catapult. Yeah. That was was, very, was, that, a, was that a one flyer plane? Uh, yeah, one, one flyer deal. Yeah. And we pick her up. Yeah. And bring her aboard. Now, tell, tell uh, your family and your friends about how that big ship had to maneuver to uh, get that plane back aboard. We just, uh, she just stopped that. We didn't even stop. 
Oh, she did. no, she just they just the, the plane would land in the water. Didn't she make a turn to kind of smooth out the water? I don't no, I don't think so. She just stopped there. We just kept moving. That was a seaplane. Yep. It stopped in the water. Matter yep. of fact, you could see it in a book. And they had these big cranes on the back. Yeah. And they just lowered a crane, pull Isn't her up, put her back on the catapult, ready to go again. Amazing. And the helicopter, the lucky lady. She just take off when she wanted to take off. Sure. She was an observation for us. Now, uh, did you have a pad for the helicopter? We did. Okay, and you kept the helicopter aboard. Right there. Ship. So you had the, the helicopter and the seaplane aboard at right. all times. That's very, very interesting. I'll be darned. That, that is something. Um, what else? Tell us some more about it. anything. Funny stories about life aboard the, the big, big. Life aboard the ship is just what you want to make it. As you well know, yeah. card playing. Yep. Oh, I was going to ask you about that. Cribbage. Yep. Pinochle. Friday night, if we weren't doing anything, we go one of the compartments. We play pinochle all night. Did you have? Uh, did they have uh, sporting events aboard, like fights and so forth? Well, we did. We had boxing, football, yep. and in interfleet things there. You know. Sure. We had them all. How about that? Bands. Yeah. It was really nice. And had movies? We had movies at night. So I was mostly a card player. And I loved to play card, dice games. You took all your money all the time. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, I'm telling you, a Navy Navy gambling aboard ship, that was something else, wasn't it? It was it was it was an experience. <laughs> I always game I like the I even before I went to What was your favorite game of cards? Blackjack. Oh boy! But we used to play pinochle for a penny a point and a, a nickel a box, and that could get pretty expensive. Yes, it could. So, uh, yeah. but again, here we was at one time we was at sea for thirty six days. All right. Didn't see anything there. Didn't see any shore so, at all. But some of the some of the things we seen wasn't. Uh, there's one time we um, the, the Marines was uh, trapped on an island, and we had to go over there and. Um, Actually, I think what we did, we, we blowed the, uh, we, we gave them support so the LSTs could get in and get them off of there. So we offloaded a bunch of them too. And that was one experience. And then and we went back and as the LSTs was coming in after we got them all off the island, the LSTs was bringing them into the, again, aboard the battleship there. And that was one of the things that I think Jack hit on uh, we got up topside there, and the, the, and the deck is full with all kind of bodies yeah. waiting to get down to sick bay. It was, it was it, those are things you don't want to remember. Yeah. Did you see burial at sea? Yes, we did. Yeah, I did too. Yeah. Very, it's very impressive. And at one time, it's another funny story. Um, of course, at the time we didn't know it. Uh, we belonged to the VFW, and we was talking to some of the guys over there. And, you know, they knew we were Korean War vets and we got to talking to each other. And one time a guy come over to us and he says, uh, when was you over in Korea? We told him, he says, uh, what was you doing? We told him he was on the U.S. battleship. So he grabbed us and kissed us. He says, you won't remember this. He says, but we were trapped up there and the whole division was under fire. And he says, you were out there supporting us. Oh. He says, we seen them 16 inch guns coming over. He said, we seen him, he said, and then he said it was a blessing sure. to get out there. So, Oh, boy. That, was, uh, that made you feel good. It made it? you feel good. Sure. You knew you were doing something to help you somebody else. You were doing else. something right so, and effective. Yeah. Well, that I, is, I, see, I, uh, I had no experience with big ships like that. I mean, I, the biggest ship I was on was that escort carrier, which was entirely different. No connect. I mean, no comparison with what you were doing. Your um, your experience aboard that ship uh, impressed me so much, as it did with your brother. And uh, uh, as you've gone through life, you can't help but reflect back right. on what you did, and particularly in wartime. The wartime. I mean, that was an experience that is incomparable. You'll never forget. Never forget it. They never right. forget the experiences you had. Yeah. Again, let's go back to the experience again. I don't know how, you know, I was only 18. I know, you were just a Just a kid. kid. I never thought, I mean, 
<laughs> down and over to Ryan, I had my battles. You know, we fought a lot and everything. We had our fights. But uh, you go to the service, it's a whole different ball game altogether. Oh, yes. It's yeah, a whole you're different, up with men there. You're, you're, it's a whole different ball game yeah, altogether. That's right. And if you, like I said before, if you think you're tough, <laughs> there's always a guy in there that's going to knock that chip off your shoulder. Yes, sir. So, yes, sir. But as you, you know, as I went through it, and then um, it was a great experience for me. And it, it's, it's the absolute incredible uh, degree of teamwork, working with your fellow right. sailors and so forth. Um, again, how did you feel about uh, the officers you came in contact with? They're very nice. nice and no problem with them nice whatsoever. Yeah. Yeah. I, I learned a lot in the service. I finished my education. I left the service. I went home. Of course, I got married. Now, you got, in the Korean War, you still had to get a certain number of points, didn't you, to get no, separated? No, no, we was done. Oh, oh that wasn't no, the deal. I went in April 26th and got out April 26th. I'll be darned. So I come home, stayed here, went back to work. At the time, I tried to get my old job back, but they didn't rehire me until I went to the VA and they rehired me. I went back to the machine shop, and I married a girl from Florida. And they had an opening down there. Her father called me and said, there's an opening down here on the fire department. We'd come on down and take the test. I did. So I moved from here to Florida. Oh, you did? And stayed on the fire department down there for four years. How about that? Then I went to the police department. And then I got involved in politics down there. And I said, this ain't for me. <laughs> so I come home. I had to reestablish. Now I got three kids and, uh, and a house down in Florida. And uh, I was working two jobs down here. So I, t I told Katie, I said, that, that this isn't for me. I'm not going to stay here with these politicians. Yeah. So I called my dad and said, see what you can do for me. You know, I want to get out of here. Well, unknown to me, you had to be back in the, you know, in Cincinnati six months before you establish your residence again. Oh, I didn't know Yeah, that. yeah. So I come back and I got my, established my residence. I put the... Uh, put in for the fire department in Cincinnati. I, I didn't make it because I was too small. I was only 5'8", at the time it was civil service, 5'8 and a half. So a job come open for the Hamilton County 911 dispatch. So I worked up there, then I went to the, uh, I went to the police department working part-time with the Coleraine Township Police. Hmm. So I stayed there between both jobs. I went to the fire department, to the police department, to the dispatch center, to being a park ranger. So it was an experience and a half. And you know where most of that training come from? The service. Yeah. If you want to go to the service, like make it as you want to make it. You can be anything you want to be. So they have 100 classifications in there yeah. that you want to be. Isn't that something? Yeah. That is well, that, that's, that's just a wonderful uh, attesting, uh, Sam, to, <clears throat> to that. And it's important to get that across to people. And, uh, of course, you know, we may be talking to the choir here, you know, your family and so forth, but uh, you are, and your brother, uh, uh, outstanding examples of wonderful American manhood. And uh, boy, we, we certainly uh, are proud of you and pleased for what you all did. Now, so you came back to Cincinnati, you had three kids. Three kids. Two boys and a girl? Three girls. Three girls. Then I had a little, and I had a boy. And then you got a boy got up a little, here. Got a boy. How about that? So, uh, and are they all here in town? No, one's down in Costa Rica painting. The other one's in Florida. And I got one in, uh, one lived in Michigan. But she's back now. And I got one lives in Westchester. Oh, boy. So, well, you it are, was an experience and a half. You are blessed and your wife. I was very blessed. And and you think so. Good health and so forth. And I, I, Let me, before we close up, I would like to say that, and as you well know, in the service, you meet some friends that you never will forget. Right. You meet and you get real close to them people. And we st I still have friends that I correspond with. I do too. And uh, you'd be surprised uh, how close you get to these people yes. in the service. Yes. But the, uh, the closest that I had experienced was on the fire department and the police department. Mm -hmm. That was a whole different ballgame altogether. Because of the hours we worked, it was that little group, you know, that we got together. Oh, 
you missed Christmas, holidays and everything. Sure. So uh, that, that's another one, guys you work with close. Very, very important. That's yeah, like you know, like when it was, was on the fire department there, you know, you're 24 on, 24 off. Mm -hmm. That was like your second house. Yes. And them guys was really close. You know, sure. we knew each other and everything. Sure. Yeah. Did the, you, firemen always seem to have wonderful food. And good, yeah, we ate pretty good. We, we you know, did just- Cooked there, yourself there, there was always somebody on there that had some kind of specialty. <laughs> they always wanted to cook or something, you know that? Yeah. It was funny though, but uh, you know I would cook, and of course at the you know we owned a restaurant one time too, and I still cook. But then on the police department, we got that little group together, and uh, every month one of us would have uh, dinner. Sure. And then the guy had to cook, not the wife. Like you would prepare the whole meal and everything. Mm -hmm. So we would do that once a month. We would cook. We had some experience. Oh yeah. One guy we went with there, he made all he would make was chili. It was good chili. <laughs> Joe would make chili. I specialize in Italian food, uh, as I do today. Sure. So. Oh, that's great. Yes, it was something else. Well, I should say. Well, you've had, <clears throat> you've had an exemplary life for one thing. <clears throat> you've had an interesting life, and as you say, you're, uh, you're lucky and you're a survivor. Uh, you've had a wonderful family to support right, you. Right, I did all you along. Inspiration and guidance. And, uh, you know, we thank you so much for what you've done and your great service to our country. And, and uh, by golly, it's been a pleasure for me pleasure to meet you, Pleasure to meet you, Sam. too, very much. And God bless, and I hope our paths cross again. I think so.